praises to Allah. But who's speaking here? Allah is speaking. So wouldn't it make more sense that Allah says, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that all praise belongs to me? No. In Arabic, there's different ways of describing oneself. And using the third person at times adds emphasis. And there's a very beautiful point over here that Allah talks about Himself in the third person. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Malik Yawmiddin. And then the verse that we will be doing today. Until this point, Allah was talking about Himself in the third person. And then you have a rhetorical tool called iltifat. Iltifat is a term in Arabic which means you change the perspective. So we're now moving from the third person Allah to a direct address to Allah. Because iya kana abudu translates as only you do we worship. Only you do we worship. And the scholars of tafsir, they ask the question, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about himself in the third person and do iltifat and change the perspective to iyaka as a direct address? So subhanallah, some of the mufassirun, they say, the reason for this is before we talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like with a king, there are certain formalities, certain preparation, certain praises that you need to do. Think about it this way, if we're going to meet the president, if you're going to meet a king, a prime minister, you don't just come knock on the door and speak to the person directly. Rather, there's a way of addressing the person. You have to speak highly of that person. You have to make preparations. Once you are ready, and then you speak to the person. So likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being praised. Allah is being described. Allah is being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mention is being made. All in the third person. After doing the hamd of Allah, now we turn our perspective and we address Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. So we say all praises to Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the malik, the owner of yawmul qiyamah. I've praised Allah, I've done the formalities, now I am able to address Allah directly. Now I speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after having praised Him, now I say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ only you do I worship, only you do we worship, and only from you do we seek assistance. The second point that I want to talk about is a grammatical point. In Arabic, in Nahr, there's a term that goes, in Arabic the term is تَقْدِيمُ مَا حَقُّهُ التَّأْخِيرِ يُفِيدُ الْحَصْرِ Which means, when something is meant to be in a particular place, and then you reorganize it, it adds emphasis. It adds emphasis. So I'll give you an example. In Arabic, if I want to say that I will hit you, I will hit you, I will say, Adribuka. Adribuka. I will hit you. So what comes first? The verb, Adribu. Then the predicate, the maf'ul. It comes afterward, you. I will hit you. But in Arabic, if I shuffle it, if I switch around the placement of the words, it adds emphasis. So instead of saying, أَضْرِبُكَ, I say, إِيَّاكَ أَضْرِبُ, you specifically, I will hit, it adds emphasis. So think about it in English. If I say to a person, I will hit you, versus only you will I hit. You can see the emphasis, the change in tone. Likewise, Allah doesn't say na'buduka wa nasta'inuka. Allah brings the maf'ul, the predicate before the verb. So instead of na'buduka, it is iyaka na'budu and iyaka nasta'in, which adds emphasis and ta'kid and makes the verb a lot stronger and a lot more specific. So what is Allah saying here? We as servants, we address Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ Only you, O oh Allah, do we worship nobody else. If I said, نَعْبُدُكَ That, O oh Allah, we worship you, then it could mean I worship you, O Allah, I worship these idols, I worship these other false gods. But when you bring the maf'ul, the predicate earlier on, it adds hasr, specification, and the address is directly to Allah, that nobody besides you, O oh Allah, do we worship. Iyaka na'budu. 
Then, إِيَّاكَ نستعين. Again, nobody besides you do we seek assistance from. So we can see the emphasis over here of Tawheed, the need to address Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. The second point I will mention and I'll conclude on this. The two verbs that are used, you have to understand the importance of Surah Fatiha because unlike other verses of the Quran, Allah from the Taqdeer, He already knew that Surah Fatiha is going to be that Surah that will be recited multiple times in a single prayer. So there has to be something very special about this surah. It's known as Ummul Kitab, the mother of the book, the mother of the Quran. So we have to focus on these two verbs. Na'budu wa nasta'een. Allah, only do we worship you and only do we seek assistance from you. Two things are clear immediately. Number one, first, we do the worship of Allah, then we seek the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, Allah is Qadir. He can give us any time, any way He wants, without any restrictions. But the person who worships Allah, then seeks assistance, will be helped by Allah a lot more as we learn from the indication of the verse. But number two, what's more important here is, when Allah talks about na'budu, ubudiyya, and nasta'een, isti'ana, what do these two verbs mean? There's a lot that can be said, but just under na'budu, I'm going to mention one incident, I'm going to finish. And that is a very famous incident we all read in Hayatul Sahaba, in Bidaya wa Nihaya. It's the incident of Rib'i ibn Amir. Rib'i ibn Amr radiallahu anhu was a governor of the Muslim army. He meets the governor of the Persian army, Rustum. And they have this conversation about what is the purpose of a Muslim? Why are you leaving the Arabian Peninsula and invading our Persian lands? What do we have that you want to take? And Rib'i ibn Amr, he says, that we have sent, Allah has sent us, we didn't come ourselves, Allah sent us for a very specific mission. And what is that mission? So that we can remove the people from the worship of the creation to the worship of the creator of that creation. And that is true ubudiyah, where our focus, our worship, our devotion, our investment, everything is solely in one place, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what is meant by iyyaka na'budu. And then we have iyyaka nasta'in, which means to seek assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we'll address this further in the upcoming sessions. But for right now, just to summarize, two points. The first is how Allah does iltifat. He talks about himself in the third person, and then he transitions into a direct address. Why does he do that? So that we can prepare ourselves to speak to Allah as a king, as an emperor, as the ruler, owner of all of us, the creator of all of us. We praise him first, and then we address him. And the second point is the emphasis in the verb iyaka and iyaka that comes twice before ibadah and isti'ana. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to do true ubudiyah of Allah. We ask Allah to assist us and we ask Allah to open our hearts to the Quran so that we can understand its message very clearly. Subhanallah wa bihamdih subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha 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 ila